As the best-selling model in the Jeep portfolio, an all-new version of the Grand Cherokee is a pretty big deal. Now, I've already had a chance to extensively test the Grand Cherokee L, which is the new three-row model. However, I've only had a chance to drive the all-new version of the two-row when I was out in Moab and Texas testing out the two-row and, of course, the two-row with the 4xe plug-in hybrid powertrain. Now, as you can see, this week, Jeep has loaned me a 2022 Grand Cherokee two-row in the Trailhawk trim with the standard 3.6-liter Pentas Star V6. As you guys know, the Trailhawk model is the more off-road oriented version coming standard with an adjustable air suspension and a segment exclusive front sway bar disconnect for those of you who wanted a Wrangler but needed something a little bit more practical and a little bit more comfortable. Now in this video, we're gonna actually live with the Grand Cherokee on a daily basis. I'm gonna put it through my usual battery of tests. And with the big question I wanna answer, if you guys have always been looking for a Grand Cherokee, does the new one represent the best of the breed? Stay tuned to find out. So before we talk about the exterior styling differences of the two row model, I wanna lift up the hood and show you guys what's powering this vehicle because Jeep offers several different engines to choose from, but this is the base engine. I suspect it's what most of you are gonna end up buying this vehicle with. So if you guys are familiar with a Stellantis product, this engine should be pretty familiar. It's the company's corporate 3.6 liter naturally aspirated uh, port injected V6. It's the Pentastar V6. The engine in the Grand Cherokee two row makes 293 horsepower. That's actually a decrease of two horsepower, I believe, from the previous generation, but it makes three more horsepower versus the same motor in the L. It makes 257 pound-feet of torque, which the torque figure is pretty light. Now that engine has respectable horsepower figures. It actually has about 23 more horsepower versus the four liter V6 in the main competitor, a Toyota 4Runner, but it has about 20 less pound-feet of torque and it has way less torque versus the V8 and of course the 4xe. It all goes out through an eight speed automatic transmission. That's a ZF transmission and Grand Cherokees come standard with rear wheel drive. The Trailhawk model, however, does come standard with four wheel drive. It's the Quadra Track 2 with an electronic limited slip rear differential with that front sway bar disconnect. So this is the most off-road oriented version currently of this generation Grand Cherokee. It's known as the WL generation. Now in terms of fuel economy, this is rated at 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. It's about a one name MPG improvement over the three row model, which is significantly bigger. Uh, it does run on regular gas. It has about a 23 gallon gas tank. Jeep doesn't quote a zero to 60 time, but since we have our equipment this time, we're gonna test it out and see if it's any quicker versus the 4Runner TRD Pro that I tested a couple of months ago. And uh, because this is the smaller two row, it is a little bit lighter than the three row that I tested last. This one here as it sits weighs in at just under 4,800 pounds, about the same weight as that 4Runner. But let's go ahead and close the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now you can see my tester is painted in this really attractive shade of like black crystal clear coat or something like that. It has beautiful metallic sparkles in the paint. As I get closer to the paint, as the sun shining out, you can really see all those metallic sparkles. The Trailhawk model also includes this hood graphic. You can see it's has it says Trailhawk here with the red accents, this like low gloss sheen to the hood graphic is supposed to help keep reflections of the sun out of your face when you're on those trails, when you're kind of facing upward on an upward slope. And then you can see looking at the rest of the styling, the two row model does have a slightly unique front bumper versus the three row. Uh, you have of course the signature seven slotted grill that Jeeps have become known for. This one also has the front trail camera. That's the sensor, one of the sensors for the driver assistance tech in this vehicle. And you can see the grill is kind of dark gray finished instead of like a chrome finish that you'll find on other trims. I also like the new uh, headlights on Grand Cherokees. These are full LEDs with LED daytime running light and turn signal, LED low and high beams. I like how skinny they are. They just give the car a sleeker, more modern look. And then you can see down here, there are LED fog lights. And then you, you can distinguish the Trailhawk model from the red uh, painted tow hooks at the front. Those are recovery tow hooks when you guys are off-roading. That's gonna be very important if the, you do get the vehicle stuck. And then with the Trailhawk model, it, model, it does get a unique front bumper with front skid plates, uh, skid plates for the, the fuel tank, the transfer case, all that stuff is what you expect when you have a vehicle like this. The, the front, the approach angle of this vehicle is slightly better versus other Grand Cherokees because it's the Trailhawk model. Now coming around the side profile, you can see this is a really nicely proportioned SUV. If it's, it's also a little bit on the conservative side. I actually think the proportions work well on the three row model as itself. I actually look at the two row and I think it looks a little short and stubby, but maybe it's because I'm more used to looking at the three row version with that slightly longer uh, rear end. Remember this car is about 11 and a half inches shorter than three row, but at a 193.5 inches long. It's about two inches longer than a Toyota 4Runner. Its wheelbase is just under 117 inches long. 
about uh, five inches longer than a Forerunner's wheelbase. I'm sorry, seven inches longer, uh, and it's uh, really going to make a difference in the um, back seat space and, of course, the stability of this vehicle. Now, the cool thing about the Trailhawk model is it does include these really nice tires. These are all-terrain Goodyear Wrangler Territory tires uh, wrapped in an 18-inch wheel with a really nice gray finish. You can also, I believe, get a black finish on these wheels. I haven't seen it on Jeep's website, but I have seen Jeep offer that. It probably is a dealer accessory. You can see the brakes are massive. You have a nice little red accent there with the Heritage Jeep on the actual wheel itself. These wheels and tires are going to be necessary if you guys are off-roading, as is the air suspension. You can see I have the suspension jacked up in its off-road 2 setting right now. At its highest setting, this vehicle will give you 11.3 inches of ground clearance. At its lowest setting, I believe it's just over 8 inches, which is plenty. The ground clearance comes close to a Wrangler Rubicon, and it has almost 2 inches more ground clearance than a Toyota 4Runner. So again, this is going to give you that off-road capability that you're looking for along with the on-road comfort. Now you can see looking at the uh, proportions from this angle here. Uh, the Grand Cherokee Two Row does offer a two-tone color combination. You can see my tester has all one color. It's got these really low-profile roof rails uh, for an extra $1,500. Jeep will also include that panoramic sunroof that my tester has as well, with more of the black accents. You can see the rear has a similar design to the front with those skinny full LED tail lights. The Trailhawk model also includes the kind of blacked out with the red out outlined Jeep badges, along with the Trailhawk badge. The tail lights themselves, you can see full LED even an LED turn signal. There's also another red painted tow hook at the back here. And then you can see underneath here, the exhaust is hidden because you don't want it in the way if you guys are actually planning to take this vehicle uh, off-roading. Now you can see over here, there's the rear view camera and there's also the camera for the digital rear view mirror. Both of them have a washer in case um, the vehicle does get dirty so you can still see through those cameras. But opening up the trunk area, you can see the two row model only comes with uh, two rows of seats. So you get 38 cubic feet of space with the second row seats up. Now, if you want to fold down uh, those seats, which Jeep doesn't allow you to do from back here, you have to actually step into the vehicle on the side. It'll expand it out to around 71 cubic feet of space. Now, if you're keeping score, that's about 15 cubic feet less versus the three row version maximum space and a Toyota 4Runner actually offers around 88 cubic feet of space. Now I'm not entirely sure the Toyota why the Toyota has more because I've seen the two vehicles back to back and the Jeep looks like it has plenty of room so it may just be have to be with the measuring of it. Um, Toyota may measure it slightly differently. You can see there is a little bit of storage to the side there. Lift this up you can see the Trailhawk model also gives you a full-size spare although it's not a matching type but at least it's better than a donut. You have a little bit more storage under there which is going to be important if you guys are planning to take this vehicle off-roading. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of the all new Grand Cherokee. Now, before we get inside the vehicle, I wanna show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the current Jeep key fob that I've shown you on other models. You can also uh, access the vehicle through Jeep's connected services app where you should be able to remote start it, ping the vehicle. Thankfully, if you don't have access to the app, which I don't, you can also still remote start the vehicle from the remote fob. You can see just push, and push the lock button then double tap that button. The vehicle will start right up. You can also set it to turn on the climate controls, the heated and cooled seats, the heated steering wheel. To shut the vehicle off, you can also do it right from the fob um, or it'll shut off if you don't have the key and you try to drive away with the vehicle. Now, uh, as you guys saw earlier, the wind mirrors, you can also set them in to fold in and out when you lock and unlock the car. Um, when you unlock the vehicle, uh, there's a sensor on the back of the handle. My tester's diamond black clear coat is accented by this global black interior, which you can see. I hope you guys like a black interior because this is the only way you can get the Trailhawk model, which includes this Capri black leather with the suede inserts with the red accent stitching, the Trailhawk embossed into the actual uh, seats, seat backs themselves, which it does look nice, but I would prefer a little bit more color, which you can get in other Grand Cherokee trims like the Overland, which offers a gray interior or the Tupelo Honey interior you can get on the Summit and the Summit Reserve. These seats are a 12-way power adjustable seat with, you can see, a four-way lumbar adjustment. You cannot get the massaging seats on the uh, Trailhawk model. You have to step it up to at least the Overland trim, but these seats are heated and ventilated. The steering wheel also is heated, which is nice. The door panel, you can see, doesn't have the full leather that I've shown you on the fully loaded Summit Reserve, but you can see this is a soft touch injection mold plastic. This is like a glossy plastic, which has an interesting look to it. There's a metal accent to door handle. You do have two person memory seats. The window controls feel nice. Newer switch gear, but you can see only the front windows are one touch, automatic up down. The rears are not, which I think that Jeep should have made it uh, included on all of them, especially considering the price of this vehicle. Padded area over here, it's hard touch down here. And you can see my tester has a nine speaker Alpine sound system, which sounds decent, but it's certainly not as good as the Macintosh audio that you find in the higher, higher trims. Now you can see this model here includes a luxury package or has a luxury package that gives you a power tilt and telescoping wheel. That is very rare in this segment. 
And then getting inside, uh, you can see the step-in height is nice and easy. You can also adjust that step-in height with the air suspension, so that's something to consider, again, that you can't find on most competitors. Now getting in and shutting the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. Jeep does not offer a soft close door feature. Uh, you have to go to a Wagoneer or a Grand Wagoneer to get that. The button to fire up the engine is where you'd expect it to be, slightly blocked by the steering wheel. And you can see this model here also includes this all digital display, which is slightly more customizable, um, but it doesn't have graphics that really impress me. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Um, over here on the rest of the interior, you can see this is this has the optional 10 and a quarter inch display, uh, which definitely looks good. Um, this also includes Uconnect 5, so it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Trailhawk also includes real stitching, soft padding on the upper part of the dash with the contrasting red, which looks nice. This one's missing the heads-up display that you can get on higher trims. You can see more of that leather stitching on the other part of the dash. There's some piano black trim. And then my tester also, for an extra $1,000, has the passenger display, which basically allows you to control audio. You can send GPS to this center display here. You can't even see the display as I move over here from my side, so that's a safety feature in case you guys are wondering. And then down here you can see this is all hard touch plastic, which you can get this stitched in leather on the upper trims. I'm also noticing this feels a little bit on the flimsier side, so not really loving how cheap the plastic feels here. The higher trims definitely rectify that. Now over here you can see you have hard buttons for your heated and ventilated seats, hard buttons for the heated steering wheel, you have a volume knob and a tuning knob, you have tri or dual zone climate control, which is nice. I've shown you guys the way this system works before. It's relatively easy to use. Um, it is a little bit slow at startup. This does include wireless over the air updates. And you can see going to the Uconnect display here, there's your home screen, there's the embedded GPS. It all works fairly well. You can see there's where it's taking a little bit of time. Um, going over there, you can see it takes a second for it to populate. You go to vehicle here, you can adjust all your vehicle settings. This model here is missing the ambient lighting that you find in the upper trims where Jeep offers like five different colors to choose from. So it's a little bit dark in here and it looks a little bit boring. There's the CarPlay, there's your usual apps where you can kind of adjust a few things. And then there's your climate function. So this looks all fairly, fairly nice. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your full 360 camera that my tester comes with a tech package with. Uh, you can see it has trajectory, it has rear cross traffic automatic braking, uh, it has parking sensors, you can also adjust the camera display to show exactly what you'd like, and you can see there's a trail view there, and then there's the one for the front of the vehicle, which also includes a washer, uh, which is nice, that's for when you're off-roading. Um, that all is going to be fairly good, it works well as well, and the graphics are also very nice. Now, a lot of piano black plastic here, which does show fingerprints. Open this up, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad. You have four USB ports in there, two USB-A, two USB-C. You can see it's good storage. This dial here is made of metal, which is nice. It actually does get hot, and it controls the eight-speed automatic transmission. It also has paddles on the wheel uh, with all your usual buttons and controls there. You can see there's your downhill assist control. There's where you can access the low range. You have a drive mode selector here. Um, basically auto and sport and snow for those of you who are on road and there's a rock and a sand mode and then you can adjust the air suspension from this toggle over here there's your sway bar disconnect which acts you can access when the vehicle is in four low and the speeds are below 18 miles an hour where it allows the front tires to uh, disconnect from the sway bars and allows for more wheel articulation cup holders here you can see and then a nice padded center console with two levels of storage here it's a pretty deep size the steering wheel you can see also looks good it's not a flat bottom design it's unique to the trailhawk with the red stitching the badge um, the controls for your um, driver assistance and whatnot. The steering wheel itself has a powered tilt and telescoping with a good amount of adjustability so I can get comfortable pretty well the horn Sounds pretty typical considering the size of the vehicle. It's a nice sounding horn. And then over here on the seats, you can see these are relatively comfortable and supportive, but I do think they could be a little bit softer. I have the same complaint with the higher trims with the Palermo leather, but at least the seats do look good. I think Jeep should just offer a different color as well. Uh, over here, you can see the rearview mirror. It does have a digital camera style, which you can get rid of by flipping that if you could prefer a regular mirror. I really like the digital camera rearview mirror. It makes seeing out a lot easier. There's LED lighting in the cabin over here. Or, uh, and then that's for the map lights and then you can see the glove box is damped and lined with felt it's a relatively uh, good size but overall the interior has most of the tech that i expect nowadays uh, it all works fairly well it has decent materials but just keep in mind jeep offers an even more luxury oriented cabin if you guys spring for the uh, summit and summer reserve trims Looking at the back seat of the two-row Grand Cherokee, you can see this does offer a 
very good amount of space for those of you who plan to put children back here or taller adults. Jeep says there's right over 38 and a half inches of legroom back here. 38 and a half makes it among the roomiest in the segment. It has about five more inches of legroom back here versus a Toyota 4Runner. Remember this car has an all independent suspension, a unibody construction, so you have far more rear seat legroom versus a body on frame construction like the 4Runner or a Jeep Wrangler. The seats themselves do have a recline function. They fold down in a 60-40 manner. And then uh, back here, the materials are soft touch surprisingly, which is nice. They don't have to cheap out here. More soft touch along the armrest over here. And then you can see my tester also includes this luxury package that has these manual rear sun shades, which is nice for blocking out uh, even more sun. Now getting back here, you can see the step in is pretty high, just like the front. Once I get back here, there's plenty of leg room. You can see very good foot space. There are rear seat air vents. They've got four USBs and there are uh, two level heated rear seats. Or, I'm sorry, three level heated rear seats back here, uh, which is nice. Although you can see the button is stuck on my tester a little bit. It's almost like it's uh, frozen a little bit, or it's sticking. Um, there's also a household power outlet over here. Uh, I'm gonna chalk that down to uh, build quality issues since mine's an early pre-production model. Uh, there's also a little bit of storage over here, which is nice. The seats themselves, uh, they have good thigh support. They're all, it's also very wide across, which is nice. I mentioned earlier, this reclines. It doesn't slide forward and back, but it does offer a good amount of legroom. There's also an armrest here that folds down, gives you two cup holders. And then the panoramic sunroof comes all the way to the back. Only this portion opens, but it does let in a lot of light. And the headroom back here is also pretty good for somebody my height. So overall, the backseat of the Grand Cherokee is definitely on the higher end of the segment, especially if you guys need to put car seats back here or full-size adults. So the last time I was driving a Jeep Grand Cherokee two row was actually last month where I was driving the four by E model. However, this week I've got the car in my home turf. I've had, I have it for a week. I have it with the base V6, which is the 3.6 Pentastar. It has nearly 300 horsepower. It's about down 82 horsepower compared to the four by E, which I loved. But now that we have the regular V6 and this Trailhawk version, the closest car that I can compare this to is a Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Now I was on this exact road with the 4Runner and I tested out the zero to 60 sprint. It got 7.3 seconds. This Jeep with about 20 more horsepower than the Toyota, but about 20 less pound feet of torque. I'm gonna be curious to see what it gets. It does have, however, an eight speed automatic transmission. So let's go ahead and see what we can get speed wise in this vehicle. I'll go ahead and I'll brake torque it. The eight speed is smooth. Engine likes to rev. It just is, uh, <laughs> Not very fast, zero to 60 in 7.53 seconds. That is 0.2 seconds slower versus the 4Runner TRD Pro a 2022 that I just tested on that exact same road. Um, so as I mentioned in my first review of the two row, the Pentastar is a perfectly fine engine. It's surprisingly smooth. It makes a good noise. It just lacks, lacks in the torque department. I mean, with 257 pound feet in a vehicle that weighs almost 4,800 pounds. It doesn't surprise me that it feels sluggish. This is about almost two seconds slower versus the 4xE. And also don't forget that the V8 model is going to be uh, quicker still versus this vehicle. So in terms of zero to 60 performance, it certainly could be faster, but remember the base V6 should be plenty powerful for most people. Now, just driving down the road, I'm gonna focus primarily on how the Jeep drives on the road, because even though you know this is a Grand Cherokee, people are gonna be taking it people could be taking it off-roading. I suspect most people are just gonna drive this vehicle out on the road, which is why it's not necessarily, you know, a, a necessary thing for you to get the Trailhawk model. I actually kind of think that the Overland version is probably the better buy for those of you who plan to drive this more on the road. And then you can just add the off-road package for an extra thousand dollars. The Grand Cherokee has a very, very refined feel. And that's kind of the biggest difference between this vehicle and a Toyota 4Runner. The Toyota 4Runner just feels significantly more truck-like. It feels so much more unrefined. I'll put the transmission or the drive mode here back into its automatic setting. And you kind of just can feel that the ride quality in this vehicle is good. It's got that adjustable air suspension. As I put it into its normal mode here, the suspension raises back up a little bit. You can also jack it up into the off-road one, off-road two setting where you have over 11 inches of ground clearance. The steering in this car also has an adjustable feel. It's an electronic power steering uh, and it feels really heavy right now. Uh, you can tailor that feeling a little bit, but this is certainly no sporty vehicle, especially not the Trailhawk model, but it is a very refined vehicle. Once you kind of get past that, V6, which can get a little bit loud at higher RPMs, 
The visibility in this car is also good. The driver assistance tech is good. The seats in this car, I'm not a big fan of the seats in the Trailhawk model. These are the only ways that you can get, this is the only interior color you can get in the Trailhawk with this kind of Capri leather with the suede Alcantara inserts. They could be a little bit more soft, um, but really what I like about the Grand Cherokee is just the refined feel. I mean, this isn't what I'd say, it doesn't feel like the last BMW X5 or even a Range Rover Sport that I drove last, but it does feel like a nice middle ground between a mainstream vehicle and a luxury car. Just, I like the engine also. When, when you get it going, it just doesn't have much in terms of grunt. At least it's paired up with a really quick shifting eight speed ZF transmission. The ZF transmission is probably the best transmission they can put with this you know, uh, sluggish feeling V6 where it doesn't have very much torque. So I highly recommend for those of you who are considering this car, it's pony up the $3,700 for the V8 or spend an extra five grand for the 4xe. The 4xe is definitely a lot more money, but remember that car qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credit, which should negate the extra uh, money that it costs. But this is still a pretty expensive car. Um, the Trailhawk model, what I like about it, however, is it gives you the off-road, the additional off-road capability, but you don't necessarily need to sacrifice on-road comfort. And that's what the Toyota 4Runner makes you sacrifice with the TRD Pro. It is obviously more comfortable than a Jeep Wrangler, but uh, the ride quality in the 4Runner is worse. The steering feel in the 4Runner is worse. The fuel economy in the 4Runner is worse. You know, in this moment, this car actually feels like it has good power. So numbers don't always tell all the stories. I'd rather be driving this uh, in the, the real world versus a 4Runner TRD Pro because the 4Runner's five speed is just dim-witted. It's so antiquated. The V6 in the Toyota is surprisingly noisier and less refined. I can't believe I'm saying that a Jeep, a Stellantis engine has more refinement than a Toyota engine, but that's kind of the world that we've come to where Toyota needs to do something about the V6 in the 4Runner. Uh, and in terms of fuel economy, in my week's worth of testing, I've been averaging 18.5 miles to the gallon in this car and mostly city driving with my foot to the floor pretty hard. And on the highway, it got about 25 MPG, which is pretty good. That's way better, about five MPG better than a 4Runner. A 4Runner can barely do 20 miles to the gallon. So that's going to make a difference. This car does take regular gas. It does have a 23 gallon gas tank. So it is going to be rather um, expensive to fill this, fill, fill this vehicle up. But, you know, it, it feels like a modern car. I mean, with the digital camera rear mirror, the 10.25 inch display with wireless CarPlay, which the Uconnect 5 system works pretty well. There were times where I found that it lagged, and it was especially slow to start up. Uh, from this angle, if you guys are wondering, I cannot even see the passenger display. Jeep put kind of like a privacy cover on that. So if I'm looking over there, it won't let me look over there or I can't see anything, which is gonna discourage me from looking over there anyways. But again, it's really cool tech. If I wanna ding the tech in this car, it's probably the um, instrument panel here, the digital one. It just doesn't really do much. It does have this night vision display, which looks kinda of cool when I switch it to that, but um, it doesn't look as good as some of the German brands, which again, I'm nitpicking here because uh, this car, I don't consider it to be a luxury car. I know Jeep likes to say it's a luxury branded vehicle, but it doesn't feel like a luxury branded car to me. It just feels like a premium off-roading specialty type of vehicle that is, you know, borderline uh, blurring the difference between a luxury and a mainstream brand. That's kind of what the Grand Cherokee for me has always been. But that's also where I take my issue of the price. This one here is well over $60,000 and there are a lot of options out there for 60 grand plus, options that are plenty more powerful, but I'd also argue they don't ha quite necessarily have the off-road capability along with the on-road comfort that you get, that near perfect blend. And that's kind of what Jeep has really nailed lately with their newest vehicles. But overall, living with this car for a week, it's comfortable, it's refined, it's practical. Um, it has decent power, it has decent tech. I'm just not entirely sure I would consider spending the money for this vehicle, but I will say this is a much better car to drive on the road versus its main rival, the current generation 4Runner TRD Pro. Now, after spending a full week with the brand new 2022 Grand Cherokee two row in the Trailhawk model, it's pretty obvious to me the Jeep has crafted a vehicle that gives you the off-road capability that you want, but also blends it with the on-road comfort that you need as a daily driver. This thing is su supremely more comfortable than the last Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro that I drove, and it also gets slightly better gas mileage. It is a little bit slower zero to 60 with the V6, which you can rectify if you guys go for the V8 or you guys spend a little bit more for the 4xe model. 
model. This car's interior offers plenty of tech, plenty of comfort, although try the seats out, make sure you guys like the seats. The back seats, as you guys saw, have plenty of room. The cargo area is spacious. And I also really like the looks of this car. I think the looks of it is classically known as a Grand Cherokee without looking a little bit too bulbous or overstyled. And in the right color, I personally would skip the black exterior color. Jeep also offers a very bright hydro blue. Uh, it would really help this vehicle stand out in a very good way for me. And I think if you guys go for the two-tone color combination, it also makes for a really attractive looking SUV. Personally, for me, I think the V6 is a little bit too underpowered. I would easily spend a little bit more with the 4xe, which I hope to plant, which I hope to spend a little bit extra time with so I can test out the range and the fuel efficiency of that model. Um, this model here, the Trailhawk version starts at around $54,000. These are already in dealer showrooms right now, assuming you can find one. The base Grand Cherokee Laredo two row with two wheel drive starts at around $38,500. That's about $1,000 more than the current generation 4Runner. I think it's worth every penny. Of course, what the Jeep doesn't have technically is the Toyota's reputation for reliability and build quality, but Grand Cherokees have been around for quite a few years, nearly 30 years, and these are really well-known vehicles and they have a loyal ownership following. Now, if you guys want four wheel drive, it's $2,000 dollars more so you're going to be spending at least forty thousand dollars the altitude version which is basically a laredo but includes leather heated seats and black accents is around forty five thousand dollars a limited is around forty seven thousand dollars the Trailhawk model starts at around $54,000. That includes things like the front sway bar disconnect, the all-terrain tires, the 18-inch wheels, the air suspension, the leather with the heated steering wheel and, he and the heated and cooled seats that my tester has. Uh, my tester, of course, isn't a base Trailhawk. You can still option this up with like a luxury package, a tech package, um, all in with the panoramic sunroof as well. My tester comes in to just over $64,000, which 64 grand makes this thing about $12,000 more versus a Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Now, granted, there are features that this car has that you can't even get on the Toyota, like the night vision camera, the ventilated seats, the air suspension, the panoramic sunroof. So it does make the Jeep slightly worth the extra money, but for mid $60,000, I would expect something a little bit faster, which is why I'd probably go for the 4xe, collect that tax credit, and then enjoy a vehicle that perfectly blends on-road comfort with the off-road capability without necessarily the luxury badge that you might get from like a BMW or a Land Rover. The Land Rover itself is a really tough competitor, but the Range Rover Sport is significantly more money if you comparably equip the vehicle, although it does come with far more power from the base engine. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk in the two row model. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.